Welcome to this video on factoring polynomials using the greatest common factor, or GCF. By the end of this video, you should be able to find a greatest common multiple of a polynomial and find the least common variable of a multiple of a variable polynomial. Alright, so let's start this off with a little bit of a review. Previously, we have been given problems like these and told to simplify and you would distribute and then combine any like terms. So let's try that. So when you have a letter or number in front of a parenthesis, it says multiply it to everything inside that parenthesis. So a times 3a will be 3a squared, and a times 2 will be 2a. Okay, so we're just going to distribute. Negative 2b times b is negative 2b squared. Negative 2b times 5b is negative 10b squared. And negative 2b times negative 2 is positive 4b. Now on this one we just got to pay attention. These are like terms, so we're going to combine them to be negative 12b squared plus 4b. Okay, and for our last one, 4xy times xy will give you 4x squared y squared and 4xy times negative 3 will be negative 12xy. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to work this backwards. I'm going to give you this as to, and ask you to factor it, which means break it back apart into the things that multiply together or the factors that multiply together. So you'll be given this, and we're going to work it back to look like that, okay? So we're going to separate and be separating a polynomial back into its product, products. So think of it as reverse distributive property. When we do this, we want to look for the largest of all of the coefficients. So remember, the coefficients are the numbers. So you're going to look for the largest number that they have in common and the smallest power of the common variable. So the smallest power of the common variable. So there's two things that we're looking for and we're going to divide them out because to get to this point we multiplied. So to go back to where we started you have to unmultiply which is dividing. Okay so we're going to look at each of these and we're going to look at all the coefficients and what is the largest factor that they share and then we'll look at the common variables and what is the smallest power that they share. Okay, so we're going to take a look. So we have 3u and 6u squared. So let's look at the numbers first. 3 and 6. Um, the biggest factor or thing that multiplies to that number that they have in common is 3. So remember we said we're going to divide these out. So we're going to divide a 3 out because they have a 3 in common. And they also have u's in common. And remember it says the variable with the smallest power. That's the most we can take out is u to the first. So we can only divide out the one u. Okay, so what we're going to do, take a look up here. See how it's a is in front with the parentheses and we distribute it through by multiplying. I'm dividing this out. I'm going in reverse. So I want to put this in front to show it undistributed. I open up a parenthesis, and in here we're going to write whatever's left over once we do our division. So 3 divided by 3 is going to cancel out, and u divided by u is going to cancel out. So 3u divided by 3u is 1. Anything divided by itself is 1. Then I have negative 6 divided by 3, which gives me negative 2. Then I have u squared divided by u. Remember, you're subtracting the, the exponent, so it's 2 minus 1, which means there's a single u left over. Now we can double check this by looking. If I distribute this through, 3u times 1 gives me 3u, and 3u times negative 2u gives me negative 6u squared, and that's what I started with. So that's how I know I'm correct. I can check by distributing. This right here that we pulled out is a factor we call the GCF, greatest common factor. Okay, it's just its special name. We easily could have written it inside of, of a parenthesis, but oftentimes you don't see it that way unless there's more than one term. And this is a monomial, so it's just 
written without a parenthesis normally. So let's try this again. We have 2x cubed plus 5x squared. So look at the coefficients first. 2 and 5 do not have a factor in common, so there is no number that we can divide out of both of them. So now let's look at the common variable and which one has the smallest power. I have an x to the third and an x squared. The squared is the smaller power, so that's what the one we're going to divide out. Okay, So we are dividing this out. That's our GCF. The x squared is the GCF. Remember that. The greatest common factor that these two things had in common. And we divided it out. We're going to write what's left over when we divide it out inside the parentheses. So 2, and there's, remember, an invisible 1 right here. 2 divided by 1 is still 2. x cubed divided by x squared. You're subtracting the exponents. There's 1x left over. Then 5 divided by 1 is still 5. x squared divided by x squared is 2 minus 2. And your exponent, your variable goes away. There's no variable left. So x squared times 2x plus 5. And we're going to double check this. We're going to take x squared times 2x, and I'll get 2x cubed. And then we have x squared times 5, which will give me 5x squared. Is that what we started with? It is. Then we factored this correctly. All right. So we're going to keep trying these. It's just it's a matter of practice to get used to looking at them. Because sometimes um, there's a lot of stuff going on, and it can be hard to keep track. So always start with the numbers, 6 and 9. They have a 3 in common. That's the biggest number that will go into both of them. U, I cannot divide out a U because there's a U in this term, but there's no U's here. So we can't divide out any U's. But they both have a V. They have at least one V, so I can pull out a V also. So my greatest common factor is 3V. What's left over when I divide it out? 6 divided by 3 is 2. U has nothing to divide with, so it's going to come along. V divided by V cancels out to 1, so we don't have any Vs that are remaining. Then we have negative 9 divided by 3 is negative 3. V squared divided by V is 2 minus 1, which means there's a single V left over. Okay, we're going to double check. This is our GCF. 3V is the GCF. That's what they had in common. Now let's just double check. 3V times 2U will be 6UV. And 3V times negative 3V is negative 9V squared. That's what we started with. We just we um, factored correctly here. All right, so we can do this with more terms too. Here's a three term problem. It has to work with all the terms. So anytime you're looking for something to pull out, it has to be in every single term. So when I look here, I got 6, 3, and 9. They all have a 3 in common, so I know I can take a 3 out. But this has z squared, this has z. There's no z on this term, so we cannot take a z out. So the only thing we can divide out is the 3. That, so the 3 is our greatest common factor. 6 divided by 3 is 2, and the z squared stays because it's got nothing to divide. Negative 3 divided by 3 is negative 1. z has nothing to divide by, so it's going to come along. Positive 9 divided by 3 is a positive 3. Okay, so we'll just quickly check, take our GCF and distribute it. 3 times 2z squared is going to be 6z squared. 3 times negative 1z will be negative 3z. And 3 times 3 is a positive 9. This is what we started with, so we know we've pulled it out correctly. Okay, let's try this one. So... This one's special because this is the first one we've run into that has a negative sign out front. We are not allowed to have a negative sign out front. Um, we can have a negative sign here, we can have a negative sign here, but we cannot have a negative sign out front. So when that happens, when the leading coefficient is negative, we're going to have to divide out a negative number. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Um, 2, 14, and 6 all have a 2 in common. 
and it's going to have to be a negative 2 because of that negative sign in front. So we're going to take out a negative 2 from each of these. So what's going to end up happening is our signs are going to change because we're dividing by a negative. And there's m to the fourth, m squared, and m. m is the smallest power, so we're going to take out just a single m. So our GCF is negative 2m. We're going to write what's left over when we divide this out so we can just see it in factored form. Negative 2 divided by negative 2 is a positive 1. You don't have to write the 1. You can just, it can be invisible. m to the 4th divided by m. You subtract their exponents, so 4 minus 1 is 3. So there's 3 m's left over. Positive 14 divided by negative 2 will be negative 7. m squared divided by m. You're subtracting their exponents, so there's just 1 m left. Negative 6 divided by negative 2 is a positive 3. Remember, signs are changing. And m divided by n cancels out to 1, so we do not need that. Okay. Now let's give this a double check. We're going to take our GCF, and we're going to distribute it through. So we have negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. m times m cubed is m to the fourth. Negative 2m times negative 7m is positive 14m squared. And negative 2 times positive 3 is negative 6m. That's what we started with. We factored this correctly. Okay. So let's keep trying. This practice makes us see the patterns more easily. We have another negative term out front, 5 and 35, having 5 in common, and it has to be negative because the leading coefficient is negative. Now let's take a look at x squared and x, so x to the first is the smaller power, so we'll take an x out, y and y, so just y is the smaller power. So our GCF here is negative 5xy. Okay. Now we're going to divide. Negative 5 divided by negative 5 is positive 1, so it cancels. We don't need to write it. x squared divided by x leaves one single x left over. y divided by y cancels out to 1, so we don't need that. The only time you have to write the 1 down is if the whole thing cancels out to a 1, like we did in our very first problem. Okay. Um, then we have 35 divided by negative 5 is negative 7, and the x divided by x cancels, y divided by y cancels, and that's going to be our final answer. We can always double check ourselves. I encourage you to always do that. Negative 5xy times x will be negative 5x squared y, and then negative 5 times 7 will be positive 35xy, and that's what we started with, so we did factor this correctly. All right, two more, and then we're going to look at some on the back. All right, negative first term. Your leading coefficient is negative, so you know you're going to have to divide by negative. Looks like always check your smallest um, coefficient first to see if it goes in all three and all the terms, and if it is, then you know what your GCF is. You, well, you know it's going to be a negative 2 here. But the x's are not in all three terms, so it is just a negative 2. When I divide that out, negative 2 divided by negative 2 is positive 1, but I still have that x squared. Positive 10 times negative 2 is negative 5, and the x will not cancel. Negative 6 divided by negative 2 is positive 3. We can double check. Negative 2 times x squared will be negative 2x squared. Negative 2 times negative 5x is positive 10x and negative 2 times positive 3 is negative 6. That is what we started with. We factored it correctly. So this is the factored form. This is what we're looking for. This is us checking to make sure we did this correctly. All right, one last one. It's got a lot going on. Just take it a piece at a time. So I'm going to look at the smaller coefficient to see if it goes into the other one evenly. And six, the 12 will not go into 32 evenly. Um, the next one that I can come up with is a 4. 4 will go into both of these, and it has to be negative, so I'm going to divide out a negative 4. And I have to look, that's x cubed, and that's only an x, so only an x can come out. 
y squared, y squared, so y squared can come out. Our GCF is negative 4xy squared. Now, what's left over when we undistributed this? Negative 12 divided by negative 4 is a positive 3. x cubed divided by x leaves 2 left over y squared divided by y squared cancels out to 1, so it disappears. Then I have positive 32 divided by negative 4 will be negative 8. x divided by x cancels out, y squared divided by y squared cancels out, and that is our answer. Let's just double check ourselves real quick. Negative 4 times 3 will be negative 12. x times x squared is x cubed, and then there's nothing for the y squared to multiply to, so it just comes along. Then we have negative 4 times negative 8 is positive 32. x, nothing to multiply to. y squared, nothing to multiply to. Right back where we started, so we know we factored it correctly. So the factored form, this is what we call factored form. We've done something to it and we've undistributed. Okay? All right, let's flip this over. Okay, I'm going to go through this first one with you, and then I want you to turn the video off and try them, and then come back so you can check how you did. Okay, so in our first problem, the leading coefficient is not negative, so I don't have to worry about dividing by a negative. So we want to find our GCF first. This is calling for us to actually write our, just our GCF here, and we'll write our final total answer over here. So my smallest coefficient is 2, so I checked, does 2 go into all three numbers? And it does. So I'm, I can factor out a 2, and I have an x squared, an x cubed, and just a single x. So I can only divide out just the single x. So my GCF is 2x. Okay. I'm going to write the final factored form. Put your GCF here, and what's left over? 14 divided by 2 is 7. x squared divided by x, there's 1x left over. Negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4. x cubed divided by x leaves 2 behind. 2x divided by 2x. Now that cancels all the way out. The whole thing cancels out, but you can't leave it blank. It's going to cancel to a 1, because you have to be able to distribute to it to get that 2x to make sure that we're writing equivalent forms. So you're going to go through, figure out what you need to divide by the GCF here, but write your full final answer here. Come back when you're finished. Here are the ones you should have done on your own. Pause the video to check your answers. I hope that was helpful. See you in class.